Why do you think it is that ham radio operators get upset and get mad when you use a ham radio on an FRS and GMRS frequency? I've got an answer for that, and it might not be what you expect, so let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Ham.Live. Take your ham radio net to the next level by using the free tool at ham.live available on every platform. Check out the link in the description below for the interview I did with the creator. This is a question I've heard several times in the past, and when I saw this Reddit article, I thought, yeah, I need to make a video about that. Because quite frankly, it's something that comes up a lot. It's something that comes up a lot, and there's I kind of have two minds about it. I have two thoughts about it, and I'm torn between which one I actually believe more. So I want to show you this article right here. This is, again, from Reddit. And this is a, this is a, new, a new subreddit I found called Low Sodium Ham Radio. There's some good stuff in there. A little bit more salty, a little bit more Wild Wild West in that subreddit over the Amateur Radio subreddit, I think. But uh, some very good information, good people in there as well. So... Why do so many hams get incredibly ass mad? That's a new one on me, ass mad. I get, okay, good. When you use a ham radio on FRS, GMRS that's been programmed properly, okay? And he quotes, but it's illegal, bro. Aside from that, if I programmed a handheld radio, and he says a handheld radio right here, a lot of people will tell you that a Baofeng UV5R is a ham radio, and while the Baofeng technically targets hams, they target a lot of other groups as well. Okay, so there's been a lot of... So some kid buying a Baofeng off of Amazon and using it on some frequency that a Baofeng will transmit on, that doesn't make it a ham radio. It will transmit on ham radio bands, but most of them... Some of the newer ones are locked down, but most of the older ones were just full open transmit anywhere. That that makes them not really, not technically a ham radio. There's a lot of Part 90 commercial radios out there that'll transmit 136 to 174 and from 400 to 480 or maybe upwards of 520 megahertz. It cover, covers all of the bands. GMRS, FRS, ham radio, marine band, all of the things. That doesn't make it a ham radio just because it transmits on ham radio frequencies. It's a Part 90 commercial radio that can be used on multiple services. So just because a Baofeng transmits on ham radio frequencies doesn't necessarily make it a ham radio, although a lot of people use it on ham radio. It's completely legal to use on ham radio, and Baofeng themselves target ham radio operators like my and target ham radio operator channels like like this one they've sent me a lot of emails in the past and they sent me a lot of radios as well to do videos about so technically it it can be considered a ham radio but when i talk about ham radio i'm a, an actual handheld ham radio are you talking about because he says handheld radio in this article right here right there highlighted says handheld radio are you talking about a baofeng are you talking about like a yezu icom kenwood radio that you've mars modded Either one could do what you're talking about. So just something to think about. You set it to use 0.5 or 2 watts, depending on the channel, and 12.5 kilohertz channel width. Who am I hurting? The FCC nor ISED has literally never given even the most minuscule of cares <laughs> about the above situation, and it saves me from having to carry a second radio. Okay, okay, so let's, um, let's break this down first. Okay, let me say this first off. You're right. I don't care. I don't understand why hams would care that you're using a ham radio, be it a Baofeng or an actual ham radio like an Icom Kenwood Yezu, okay? I don't understand why hams would care if you're using those radios on FRS frequencies. I don't get it. I know it exists in 30 years of being a ham radio operator. I have never seen anyone get mad, either on the air or in person on the air, on the air using the radio or in person in uh, ham radio club gatherings or in uh, ham fest group gatherings i've never met anyone who was mad at someone else for using their ham radio on frs frequencies or gmrs frequencies same frequencies by the way gmrs has eight repeater channels that frs doesn't have and frs has a lower channel output that they can use over gmrs but the frequencies are the first 22 frequencies on both services are all the same so I've never seen that. Now, I know it exists because I've seen hundreds of comments from you guys out there saying, why do people get mad about this? People are getting, I got yelled at this. I got I heard someone get mad about this. I heard someone get yelled at about this. I read this on, a, on an internet 
uh, post somewhere, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. So why do people get mad about this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. It's a stupid thing to get mad about. I understand if you're talking about unlicensed people transmitting on ham radio frequencies. That's a totally different game. Totally different ball of wax. That's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about using a handheld radio that's not meant for FRS to transmit on FRS frequencies. Yes, it is illegal. Yes, you ha are supposed to have a FCC certified radio to transmit on FRS and on GMRS. This is stupid. This is a stupid rule because those radios typically are made in China and they're typically not the quality of radio that, say, a Motorola or an Icom or a Kenwood would be if you were to modify those. A lot of Motorola radios are part 90 and will transmit on those frequencies anyway. It's stupid to think that a part 95 certified radio from the FCC, which comes from China, and maybe the certification maybe was fudged on a little bit, I don't know, would somehow is somehow less disruptive than a really good Motorola or Icom radio that's been modified to transmit on FRS frequencies. I don't care. It's going to be a cleaner signal from a Motorola or an Icom than it is from some cheap Chinese radio that you buy in a blister pack from Bass Pro Shops anyway. So I don't get that. I really don't. I don't get it. Okay, I don't I know. Again, I've never seen it in person. I don't know anyone who's upset about this, but I know it exists because people talk about it on the Internet all the time. I've never heard anyone talk about it on the air, but they talk about it on the Internet all the time. So I don't get this. But but having said all that, don't come along and say no one cares, because if they didn't care, they wouldn't make a rule or a law over it. OK, so it is illegal. It is illegal to use non certified radios on FRS, on GMRS, okay, on business band. Ham radio doesn't have a certification process. Part 97 is an experimenter's license. We can build and use our own radios and transmitters. It's basically the only service out there that you can do that. GMRS, you can't do that. CB, you can't do that. FRS, business, most of the business bands, you can't do that. So marine band, you can't do that. So part 97 is a radio experimenter's license. So it doesn't really, there's no such thing as a part 97 certified radio. But there is Part 95 certified for FRS and GMRS, Part um, whatever it is for CB, I forget. It is illegal to use a other classification radio on those frequencies because it's not certified. It's a dumb rule. It's a dumb law, but it is there. So the part that I have seen people get upset about is simply that when someone says it's illegal, people like to blow up at you and argue, well, no one cares. It's not illegal. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. Go ahead and do it if you want to. I'm not telling you not to do it. But don't tell me, don't come by and tell me nobody cares and it's illegal because you can get busted for that if you just get on the air and you're a total jackass and someone calls you out and you get caught with it somehow. The likelihood that you're going to get caught with that is very, very, very minimal. Okay, but it is not zero. It might be like 0.5% chance, <laughs> but it's not zero. You could totally do that. And there's stories in the, there's stories I've shared on this channel about people getting caught for faulty transmitters on GMRS, for transmitting on GMRS without a license and this kind of thing. So people do care, but I don't really understand why hams get so upset about another services frequencies like FRS. FRS are not ham radio frequencies. So why do we care? I don't get that. I really don't. Now, if you are a ham radio operator or really a GMRS operator, and you want to run a net on your local GMRS or ham radio repeater, check out ham.live. This is a free service that works on any platform, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, anything, Linux, uh, anything else. It's a web-based platform. You can track your check-ins for your net. You can send messages back and forth to other people who've checked in. And you can expand your net by using ham.live for your web logging services for whatever net you're running. Check it out. Link in the description below. Thank you to Sean, ham.live creator. I interviewed him on this channel a while back. I'll leave the link to that interview in the description below. So go check that out website and uh, let me know what you think about it. So a few of the comments on this article. Okay. A lot of hams are just role playing as code enforcement. So I want to make something perfectly clear. Now, this does not, this does not include FRS frequencies. Remember what I said a minute ago? I don't get it. Okay. There is a thing in the AWRL called a volunteer monitor program. Volunteer monitor program is a formal agreement between the FCC and the AWRL. Volunteers trained and vetted by AWRL monitor the airwaves and collect evidence 
that can be used to both correct misconduct and recognize exemplary on-air operations. So in other words, it's not just policing the bands, it's recognizing good operators on the band. Cases of flagrant violations are referred to by FCC, by AWRL, for action in accordance with FCC guidelines. This program re-energizes enforcement efforts in the amateur radio bands. So this does not include FRS, GMRS. Make that perfectly clear. To my knowledge, GMRS does not have a program like this. But since basically the dawn of time, ham radio operators have been self-policing long before the FCC ever got involved. A lot of people want to get rid of the FCC. I would vote in favor of getting the FCC out of ham radio because AWRL and, F and uh, radio transmissions existed before the FCC did. I'm actually looking at maybe doing some sort of video about history of the FCC, but we'll see. Program re-energizes enforcement efforts in the amateur radio bands. We're not talking about that here. A lot of hams are just role-playing as code enforcement. Why? Why? Why are they role-playing as code enforcement on an FRS frequency? I don't know. I don't get it. It's a dumb thing to do. Stop doing it if you're doing this. No one cares. I don't care. Okay. Now, if you're talking about, again, if you're talking about unlicensed people on ham radio bands, that's different. That's what this is for. But as far as people using radios on FRS, I don't care. So here we go right here. Hams are still able to build and operate our own radios. This is what I was talking about part 97 a minute ago. On the ham bands, is covered under our license. In fact, aside from experimental situations, hams are the only ones that are able to build and essentially certify our own equipment. FRS and GMRS are type certified. FRS, such as, much like ISM, I'm not sure what that is, the device is licensed, so to speak. I bet this is a major whoosh, though, lol. <laughs> I know you're either quoting from the original commercial of the Family Guy or Parenting. <laughs> That's funny. So, I don't get, here's a, here's a good comment. I don't get mad about it because I do the same thing, but I do tell people to shut up about doing it because it doesn't need to be openly obvious. Yeah. When people actually get mad is when I don't want to bother getting a license and I'm just going to buy this bail fang and use it however I want. Correct. The first rule of ham radios on FRS on FRS club is you don't talk about ham radios on FRS club. What is an FRS club? Never heard of such a thing. Never heard of such a thing as an FRS. GMRS club, sure. GMRS club. I never heard of an FRS club. I think you're making a joke. I laughed at it. It's kind of funny. Some hams just don't like FRS in general. I've never heard this either. I've never heard this either. My good friend told me I'd rather die than I'd rather die than call for help on an FRS radio, and I'm pretty sure he was, he was serious. Well, then this guy is probably just an old curmudgeon, because I've never I used FRS a few times. Some uh, couple of my hunting buddies I hunt with don't have a GMRS or ham radio license. We use FRS radios to talk to each other when we're out at the hunting lease, and it's very possible that I used one of my Part 90 certified radios to do that. But you don't know that. You don't know that. You you have no idea if that's true or not. So Agreed. Ham and GMRS user right here. I'll hand an FRS to a friend and GMRS to a family member who has no desire to learn and take a tech test. Te tech test. And we'll have a great day skiing safely, keeping in touch, coordinating lift up to the end. And because FRS and GMRS are interoperable, in other words, they're all the same frequencies, it's really easy. FRS and GMRS are very useful, and I'm glad to have a license in addition to my amateur radio license. One is a support tool in the pursuit of the hobby. The other is a hobby that can be applied sometimes to other hobbies, but more often is, the, is not the hobby itself. And this guy says, that's where I'm at. My spice has no interest in hand. However, I got GMR lessons, GMRS license and three handholds because your GMRS is covers your entire family. So, long story short... A bunch of babbling from my end on that, so I apologize. Thank you for listening this far. If you've made it to this part of the video, I don't get why anyone cares what radios you use on FRS. And if this is something, if you're a ham radio operator and you've gotten mad at someone for using their radio on FRS, what the heck, man? Seriously. If they come over to ham radio and start babbling on 6.52 without a license, that is something we should politely address them about. We shouldn't get mad and start yelling at them over the air, or start calling them out on the internet. Give me a break, okay? But using your radio on FRS, who cares? I'd like to know what you guys think about this. I would like to an honest discussion in the comment section of this video. Put a comment below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching today. By the way, YouTube thinks you want to watch these videos next, so go check those out.